and speak a bit more about the movement of people. And joining me now from Kabul is Obaidullah Bahir. He's a lecturer in transitional justice at the American University of Afghanistan. Welcome to the programme. Good to see you once again. Now, we've just heard from the EU foreign policy chief uh, saying it's our moral duty to rescue as many Afghan staff as possible, but we cannot take all Afghans out. What do you see as the moral duty of the international community and those countries which, of course, fought in Afghanistan and hired so many Afghan staff? Thank you for having me. Um, the Taliban spokesperson uh, just a day ago um, had a press conference in which he said that they, they didn't want any uh, brain uh, migration happening from the country. They didn't want to lose uh, the skilled talent that the country had. Uh, the question then was, was that a choice um, that the people had or was it an obligation for them to stay? The international community, for those who don't feel safe as, uh, as of now, they should uh, negotiate a way for them into the airport because a lot of flights have come, a lot of people have been offered a way out, but the, if they cannot access the airport or if the airport itself isn't safe enough, um, then they really can't risk it. So it's the international community's responsibility to engage with the Taliban leadership and negotiate a way out for the people that are stranded here. And uh, earlier I spoke to our um, to, to Bilal Sarwari in Kabul, and he said that the possibility maybe of, of a humanitarian corridor could be the solution to this. What do you think? I think everything is in the air right now. The Taliban are caught up in a lot of important uh, aspects of governance, including establishing a government. I think everything would flow more smoothly um, as soon as a government is established in Kabul. Uh, the Taliban are reported uh, to have made contact with um, much of the Afghan elites, including people who oppose them as well. The question then would be when they create a government, if it's inclusive, does it include a lustration process to make sure that those who were corrupt in previous governments don't make it into the current government? For that, they would have to have some impartial body to uh, judge so that it doesn't look like the Taliban are exercising victor's justice. So there's a lot of stuff for the Taliban to do. And I hope the international community prioritizes this humanitarian corridor for people to manage to get out, because um, whatever is said within Kabul or whatever is done, the reality is that in the provinces, people aren't safe still and people are still afraid of what they've seen there and seeing it replicated inside Afghanistan ab after the foreign troops leave. So there are apprehensions. The Taliban have to address it. The international community have to find a way out. Um, so it all remains to be seen. And the US President Joe Biden, well, he said that uh, US troops may stay in Afghanistan beyond the withdrawal deadline at the end of this month. What does that say to you about their exit strategy or lack of? And of course, we've seen uh, those chaotic airport pictures. The world has seen them again and again. I think we should name this week as the week of being disappointed with presidents. We saw Asraf Ghani justifying him fleeing, saying he didn't even have time to change. He left in slippers. Uh, there was no apology to the nation. He had months, he had a year to discuss a transition. He acted as a spoiler. He took money from Afghanistan. He left it in the worst possible condition. And then we have President Biden, who is completely elusive to his responsibility towards Afghanistan. He said that, I will not mislead my people by thinking that having troops stay for a little longer will make a big difference. Then why are they even here? Um, he clearly does not have a plan. He's making things on the go. And I really, really hope the American people don't forget his mismanagement of his withdrawal as well, and that it affects him in the coming elections because they didn't do right by the common Afghan people, those who worked with them, those who trusted in them, and then they were left behind. Um, they didn't even engage with either the government or the Taliban enough. All of this could have been avoided. This mayhem, this chaos could have been avoided. Um, and now we're in an anarchic city um, and hoping that the best happens as soon as possible. Always a pleasure to get your views, Obaidullah Bahir from the American University of Afghanistan. Thank you.